YouTubers, Pastor Bob. Hey, I hope you guys are all having a blessed week. Mine's going really good. Hey, listen, I did a video last weekend and there were all kinds of sparklies like all over the place right in here. And a lot of people <laughs> were going, what the heck is that? Well, listen, uh, the curtain was open just a bit and there was a little ray of sunshine coming across and those were all the dust particles uh, dancing in that sunlight. That's what that was. We live uh, two doors from the railroad tracks. Like we live on the corner of a cul-de-sac, my next door neighbor, and then the next door from that is the tracks. So uh, the trains go by literally probably two or three times an hour and uh, they stir up a lot of dust. So anyway, that's what that was. Uh, this house because of the tracks, you can literally dust your furniture, come back in two days and almost write your name in it. But listen, I want to talk to you for just a minute about nothing new. There's nothing new. And uh, we have this nasty habit in our modern age where we think that we're smarter than everybody else that's ever lived before. In other words, we think that like we're evolving and, and we're smarter than everybody else. Uh, we think that because we have all kinds of cool stuff that we've invented. Uh, we've been able to, with modern communications, we've been able to pull our resources and therefore the inventions just come so much faster. Uh, Solomon tells us that this view of history is incorrect. This is what Solomon says. Ecclesiastes 1.9 says, the thing that has been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. There is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new, it has already been of old time. It was already before us. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come and those things which shall come after. In verse 9 he tells us that what we have now, everything that we have now, has already been before. And verse 10 tells us that what we have now they had long, long ago. Verse 11 tells us that there's no remembrance of former things. In other words, we forget generations upon generations they all forget the things that have come before and virtually everything that we've been taught in history is wrong those who come after us Solomon is telling us that those who are going to live way in the future aren't going to have any remembrance at all of us today So you're, you people think that's kind of that's kind of hard to believe, Pastor Bob, that those people had the same thing we do. Look at all the things we have right now: electricity, right? Flight, computers. People listen. All those things: electricity, vehicles that fly, and computers have all been here pre-flood. Hard as that is to believe. Everything we have now they had before the flood. Knowledge, forget it. People of old, people that lived thousands of years ago, they knew more about the world, both physically and spiritually, than what we do right now. You look at the walls of Peru. When you go to Mocha Picchu, Peru, and you look at these walls, that were built most likely by the Nephilim. You can take a wall that's 400 feet long and 50 feet tall and every single stone is a different shape. There's not two stones in that whole wall that's exactly alike. Every one of them is totally different and you can't even get a razor blade between them. We can't do that today. How about the Baghdad battery? That was a battery that was found in Baghdad that's well over 2,000 years old. It's copper, it has a cop it's uh, pottery, and it has a copper core 
with two little posts. And when you pour uh, orange juice in it or lime juice, it creates voltage. It's a battery. Well, as you can see, I had to go outside. My glasses darkened, but I found out the problem. Mr. Brody was hearing the bug man. So the bug man was here and he didn't like that. So uh, that's his job. Let me know when anybody's outside. So anyway, where were we? Okay, I think we ended up on the Mediterranean computer. Anyway, this computer, they found this box in the bottom of the Mediterranean. It's probably between two and 3,000 years old. And it's a box and they x-rayed it and it's got all kinds of brass gears. I mean, this thing would marvel a Swiss watch and it's that old. And then uh, you guys have seen those little uh, airplanes, little gold airplanes. Uh, the guy Sergio on Ancient Aliens, he wears one as a pin. But they found about eight or nine of these little golden aircraft and they're small, but they're carved out to where you can see the, like the rudder you can see the flaps, the ailerons, the intake, the exhaust, everything on these little planes. And these things are thousands of years old. And they're there for you to look at. And the Chinese, they have got, they've had flying balloons thousands of years ago. So, uh, yeah, we're not quite as smart as we think. And here's another one. Medical operations. They have found a lot of different bones in Mesoamerica, Brazil, Peru, Mexico, and they have found skulls where you can they can tell they took the skull and they cut out a section and then put it back in and the person lived because the section they cut out had weed back together again. So they were doing they were operating on brains like when someone had a tumor or something, you know, thousands of years ago. So anyway, the list is endless. They also had some use. Now that's in the physical world. What about the spiritual world? Well, all we have to do is go back about 3,500 years and we have Moses in the court of Pharaoh. And Moses throws his stick down, it becomes a serpent. And what happens? Pharaoh's, music, mu, ma, Pharaoh's magicians, they take a dead stick, a dead stick, and they throw it on the ground. And what happens to it? It becomes a serpent. Now, true, Moses' serpent ate theirs up because God was in charge of his. But still, these human beings had the, they were able to access a satanic power that allowed them to take a dead stick, throw it on the ground, and it became a living thing. That's some pretty, pretty good tapping into some satanic power to be able to do that. So listen, there's nothing new. We don't have anything new that people of old did not have. And uh, I think that the great, the great flood it literally washed the earth clean, and, and these things are not to be found. I mean, some things have been, but most of the things, I think that the Great Flood just wiped out pretty much everything. So listen, there's nothing new under the sun. That's what Solomon tells us. And uh, from my investigation, from looking at artifacts, I believe that's true. I believe that everything that we have now, they had then. So what's the purpose? What I want you to take away from this? <laughs> Brody barking. That's, that's what we're after. Brody barking. So anyway, this is what I want you to take away from this. Technology is not going to save us. Inventions are not going to save us. Nothing is going to save us except the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. You know, the Lord said that, hey, if he didn't return, not one human being would be left. No flesh would survive. 
So it's obvious that our technology can't save us. Anyway, heaven or hell you choose. Just remember, once you take your last breath, it's a done deal. Got gears, brass gears, cut in it that would literally almost rival a watch. This thing is... Mr. Brody must be hearing sensitive. Alright, let me go find out what's wrong. Nope. Before I started, before I started recording, I uh, closed all the doors and all the windows so Brody wouldn't hear nothing, so he wouldn't jump up and go bark. But obviously that didn't work. Okay, where were we? With Solomon. Anyway. I don't think he's going to shut up. Alright, let me go find out what he's barking at. You guys stay right there. Brody, 